Okay, BMW E60 M5, got a faulty thermostat, stuck open. The symptoms, the engine's taking longer than it should do to get up to temperature. The heater's not blowing as warm as it should do. And we're getting some background codes, no check engine light. Been getting this 2B59. And uh, also, there was one specific for a thermostat stuck open, it's coming and going, not here today. If you're just getting this code on its own, it could be the thermostat or it could just be the coolant temperature sensors faulty. But yeah, with everything else going on, it's got to be a thermostat. So we'll get some bits together and chuck a new one in. Okay, so the parts we'll need for the job. Got the BMW coolant here. That's a litre and a half a bottle. I'm going to do a full coolant drain and flush. So uh, three of them bottles and uh, mix 50-50 with water. Thermostat here. It's a Meili Beer brand. Um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing them names right. It's a 79 degree. That's the OEM one. You say you want OEM or genuine BMW one. Don't go for any different temperature ranges or cheap ones because it's just likely to fail sooner or cause you problems. So just they're cheap enough. So just stick with a genuine one. Um, got the four O-rings here. There for the two coolant tubes at the back of the thermostat housing. I'll show you them when we get into the job. We've got two copper ceiling washers here. That's for the little banjo fitting that fits to the thermostat housing. Part numbers for them in the description just to help you guys out. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so first off we need to drain the coolant. So get the front end of the car up in the air, remove the plastic under tray, pretty straightforward. Now there's two drain points on the radiator, one halfway up on the left hand side. Just be able to see it here, there with the red valve handle. And then on the right hand side it's just right in the bottom corner. So if you're just doing the thermostat, you can get away with draining just the top half of the radiator. But I'm going to do a full coolant drain and fill, so we'll drain it right from the bottom the whole lot. So this is what the drain points look like. It's actually a valve with a pretty handy hose connection there. So I've got a plastic hose here running to drain pan there. It's a 3 8 of 10 mil ID hose. So just unscrew the red valve handle there until the coolant starts draining. So now that's draining nicely. Just remove the expansion tank cap, speed up the process. Right, so next we need to remove the intake plenums. So we'll start off by removing the two intake boxes. So right hand air filter box, we've got five clips to undo. There's a hose to unclip and then the hose clamp and undo the MAF connector. Okay, left hand air box, got the five metal clips again. It's a T27 Torx bolt there to remove. Pull up the washer reservoir filler neck, just unclips, pull it out the way. Pull these two hoses out the way for the expansion tank. There's an electrical connector for the MAF to remove and then again the hose clip for the plenum. Next remove the expansion tank, so there's three 10mm bolts, one there, one over there. And one down the bottom here, lift it up out of the way, give yourself a bit more room. Next, remove the wiper plenum, so we'll pull the weather strip off out of the way. There's a wee 13mm plastic nut here, just needs to be turned 90 degrees. And a metal clip here. Same on the other side. Lift the lid and the cabin filter out of the way. There's three more 30mm plastic nuts there. Turn them 90 degrees, and there's a T20 Torx down the bottom there, and then that just lifts off in two halves. On the right hand side you've got these two electrical connectors to remove. Okay, so we've got the two air filter boxes out of the way, the wiper plenum removed. So we'll start off by pulling out that rubber block at the front there, just pulls down. Remove the two larger hoses at the back of the intake plenums there, there's one here, one on the other side. And next off we'll go through and undo all 10 hose clamps and then that'll give us a bit of access once we lift it up to undo all the other hoses. The hose clamps are quite awkward to get to so you'll have to get creative with your screwdriver and your socket extensions. Hiding away under there. Lift the front up and there's a hose to disconnect at the front there. One on either side too. There's a small electrical box over the back here. It needs to be lifted up and off the back of the plenum. Right down the back there. Now you can reach down the back of the plenums here, under these two hoses. 
just press the plastic clips and pull them off. Just be gentle because they do break easily. There's another small hose over the back in the corner here for the crimp connector on. I was able to just to pull it straight off without removing the clamp. And once we've got the intake plenums out of the way, we're left with this view. Beautiful. Okay, we've got the two hoses to pull up and out of the way here. Four 10mm bolts to remove, 13mm banjo fitting to remove, and then we've got the two main hoses here, so just clip the clips up and then pull them out of the way. Right, next remove the plastic cover from here, two 13mm bolts. There's another 13mm bolt to remove here that's holding the wiring harness, then that will allow you to lift it up far enough to get the thermostat out, which is under this housing here. Right, so here we are, this is what we came for. So we need to pull the thermostat out, so rather than lever it with a screwdriver and risk damaging this ceiling face here, I normally just get hold of it with some grips and just work it backwards and forwards, twist it out, it comes out pretty easy. And then just pull the two tubes out with your hands and we'll change the o-rings on them. Okay, we've got the new thermostat in there now and the four o-rings replaced on the tubes, two tubes pushed back in, ready to reinstall. Okay, so now we've got the thermostat housing back in position. And then we've got the three main mounting bolts here. So you just want to do them finger tight at first and then just tighten them down slowly together. A little bit at a time, just to bring it down nice and even. Right, so we've got everything back together now. So the next job is we need to fill it back up with coolant. So what we'll do first to make sure the heater valve's open is um, we'll just change all this, uh, let's see, so on the hottest temperature, both sides, and then you just want it on the slowest fan speed, and I normally just change it to the hottest setting on the iDrive there also, so I'll be um, going through the heat exchanger and that'll push any air out to the high point which is the expansion tank. So with the heater running, uh, engine off, you want to fill up the expansion tank slowly with coolant. 50-50 mix and you want to fill it right up until the little red indicator is sticking up about oh, 20 mil and then once you've got it there start the engine with the cap off and that will self bleed any air out with this being the high point up to the expansion tank and um, let it run for 15 minutes and uh, if the little indicator does drop just top it up to maintain that sort of 20 mil above the top edge of the threaded neck and once you've done that, put the cap back on, uh, take the car for a drive, and once you get back, have a good look for any leaks around all the joints you've disturbed. And then once the car's fully cooled down like the next day, just remove the cap again and you might just need to adjust the level and you should be all good to go after that. So if you found the video useful, don't forget to give us a like or subscribe. Thanks for watching.